So today, well, the day I'm filming this, is my birthday. Yay for me! So I decided to make a more personal video this time dedicated to 10 albums that soundtracked important moments in my life. Now these don't necessarily have to be albums that I like or love, just albums that were playing when important stuff happened in my life. But yeah, I love all of these, so before I get started, please give the video a thumbs up if you're feeling generous and subscribe to the channel. It would make a pretty darn sweet birthday present for me. You're the best. By the way, similar to my previous video about 20 albums that shaped my music taste, which I'll link to right here, I think. These are also in chronological order. Okay, here we go. First up, The Beatles, Abbey Road. I got this on CD one year as an Easter present. I've since been told Easter presents aren't a thing and that I'm super spoiled. I sat on my bed, grabbed my Discman, put on my headphones, and just grinned from ear to ear the entire 40 minutes. You ever listen to something the first time and just know it's going to stick with you forever? That was the first time I listened to Abbey Road. This moment is important to me because it was one of the first early experiences where I remembered feeling just how much I loved music, how much it was a part of my identity, and that more than any other interest or passion, it was going to stick with me for the long run. Next up, Adrenaline by Deftones. I remember we went on a family trip all the way to Arizona one summer to stay with my cousins. I think I was like... 10 or 11 at the time. I've talked before in previous videos about my older cousin Joe, who was in high school at the time of this trip, and he had a huge music collection and was a big influence on me and the music I grew to love. After Joe would get off work from his construction job, we would ride around in his car, just the two of us, and absolutely blare this album from the Deftones. His car was an older model, I don't even remember what it was, but he had some speakers put in, I think, because I remember it was just loud. We would stop at Taco Bell or something, and I remember watching him flirt with all the girls his age that were working the drive-thru. And when you're not quite a teenager and you don't really know how to talk to girls, it was pretty cool watching my older cousin do it with total ease. That album just soundtracked a really great summer memory in my formative years. Next on the list, Green Day's American Idiot. This one soundtracked basically my whole senior year of high school. I remember it came out in September, insert your wake me up when September ends joke here. And as soon as school was out that day, me and my friend Sheldon drove to a nearby town to the nearest record store to pick it up. And we listened all the way home and then drove around and listened to it again. We went with my girlfriend and my sister to Kansas City the following May to see the concert. And it was life changing. Green Day is amazing live. It's still one of my favorite live music memories. The album's narrative about a kid who's dying to leave his hometown and see the city really resonated with me at that age. Not to mention all the political stuff the album's well known for. As a liberal kid in a conservative small town, American Idiot was a major moment for me and I still listen to it today and think of those times. Next up we've got The New Pornographers with Twin Cinema. When I left home for college in Lubbock, Texas, as I guess when any kid leaves for college, it was bittersweet. I was leaving my old life behind and starting a new one all alone more or less in a new city away from my old friends and family. I don't think I really knew what an introvert I was or how unconfident I actually was or that I didn't know anything about anything. I remember the first week with no friends in this new town that compared to my home town was enormous and overwhelming and I was too afraid to leave campus because I had no idea where I was going and there was no such thing as Google Maps yet and so I would wander aimlessly at night around campus listening to this album on my headphones. I was alone and melancholy and homesick and uncertain of my future. I actually look back on this memory fondly now because eventually even when we're wandering in the dark in a strange place possibly listening to quirky indie rock we all eventually figure out where we're going. Next, Kala by MIA. Of course, I inevitably made some friends while in college in Lubbock, especially through the college radio station I was involved in. One of my very best friends was Kim. We would skip class at 3 p.m. and go to the bar and end up closing the place down at 2 a.m. with our circle of friends. Or we would get day drunk downing boxed wine outside of our residence hall on campus. There wasn't much else to do in Lubbock. I wouldn't say Kim and I had much of an overlapping taste in music. I was deep into indie rock and rap and dance music and she was more southern and alt country and 
traditional country fan, but for some reason we both loved MIA, which is strange in retrospect, but whatever. And we would drive around in her car listening to this album the summer it came out. It's another great memory with a lifelong friend, a hot new album during a hot Texas summer. It just goes to show a universal truth that music is best when shared with friends. Up next, Saturday's Equal Youth by M83. My younger sister Emily went to Texas Tech in Lubbock too. And one night I drove her out to the college's observatory for an after class evening astronomy project. It's a little ways out of the city, pretty much out in the middle of nowhere in Texas. So you can definitely see all the stars. While she was in her class, I sat in the car and put on this album. I reclined my chair back and opened the moonroof while listening, just looking up at the sky. At the time I was going through a difficult breakup with a girl and I was ending a rebound situation with another girl and it was a strange, weird time. And I was just feeling very nostalgic for simpler times and melancholy and lonely and all the feelings of rejection when you're lovesick and heartbroken and still pretty young. So naturally this M83 album, which sounds like a John Hughes movie in space, was pretty much the most perfect thing I could be listening to in that moment. This is yet another example of remembering the first time I heard music that completely changed my worldview and helped me figure out who I was, my self-identity. In that moment, I was just starting to figure it out. It's always crazy and powerful to think about what was playing when you discovered something about yourself. I feel like everyone, but especially people who love music, has had an experience like that. Next up, One Wolf, self-titled. Now, some of you are probably going to be like, who the hell is this band? Let me explain. While in college in Lubbock, I got really into the local music scene there, and my favorite band by far was One Wolf, featuring my buddy Zach Davis on drums, Brad Ivey on bass, and primary songwriter, guitarist, and singer Daniel Markham. Sammy Rana joined the band on keys later on down the road. Their sound is like a mixture of alt country with some REM and shoegaze elements thrown in, I guess. This was around the same time I was dealing with the pretty bad breakup and so I just dove into this scene and especially this album. Every one of Markham's songs just hit the nail on the head for what I was feeling at the time. Plus it was great to hear these songs live in local bars surrounded by friends and on a regular basis. It's a pretty cathartic experience to hear music that you can so strongly relate to when you're going through a rough time, but that effect is multiplied when you're sharing that moment with people you know and love. One Wolf has gone their separate ways for the most part, but Daniel Markham is still making his badass brand of rock and roll, and he's a successful fixture in the Denton and Fort Worth areas, and you should check him out. I'll link to his website below. Next up is The Thermals with Now We Can See. If you're a music fan, you've probably heard of South by Southwest. While most college kids in Texas opt for insanity at the beach during spring break, me and my friends would always head to what would become my future home, Austin, for this insane week of running around downtown, catching the hottest new bands in dingy dive bars and clubs. One year in particular, I look back on pretty fondly. My sister and I caught the thermals doing a set at, I think it was Mohawk? They had just released this album, Now We Can See, and we had listened to it the whole way down to Austin. Anyone that knows me knows that I like to make plans and stick to them. So I was kind of the South by Southwest spreadsheet czar, if you will. I knew what bands were playing where and what time and what club and when we had to be there, and I was not getting off schedule. But once we saw the Thermals play their set, we loved them so much we decided to do what I almost never do, which was be spontaneous. We just ended up following the band all around the city, catching almost every set they played that day. We caught them at Red 7 and The Parish and probably Club DeVille and a few others I can't remember. That may not have been the exact moment I knew I wanted to move to Austin, but by then it certainly felt like I had found my new home. Which segues perfectly into the next album, High Violet by The National. This album came out the week I moved to Austin. And for the first night in my new apartment on the east side, I was all alone. My roommate hadn't moved in yet, so here I was once again in a new place, all by myself, all my friends and family, miles away. Even more than that first week of college, that first night in Austin was kind of scary. I had just graduated, and I wasn't really sure where the rest of my life was going, what I was even going to do. Earlier that day, I went to Waterloo Records and picked up this new national album on vinyl. And so that night, with nothing but my thoughts and anxieties to keep me company, I dropped the needle on it, reclined on my sofa, and just let the music 
fill the room. This album is a pretty perfect soundtrack to moments of transition in your life, especially moments that feel like you're growing up and becoming an adult, whether you want to or not. Finally, the world's greatest American band from White Reaper. You know what I said earlier about how music is best when it's shared with friends? It's even better when it's in an amazing location. I currently work for a small-ish, locally focused media company here in Austin with a pretty cool boss. And every once in a while to reward us for a good year, he'll take us on a trip. This year in particular, he flew us all out to Mexico. We stayed in a villa just a short walk from the beach with a rooftop pool and all the booze and food we would ever need. I would like to say we <laughs> immersed ourselves in the music of the local culture. The new White Reaper album had just come out and we were pretty much blaring that instead. It's perfect party music. I have a lot of great memories from my job and this is definitely one of them. Some of those people have moved on to other things, but for that trip we had a pretty tight crew. People I consider more than colleagues, more like lifetime friends. And spending springtime in Cancun doesn't hurt the memory either. So there you go, that's 10 albums that soundtracked important moments in my life. I'm sure this video made you think of a few of your own, like what was playing when you had your first kiss, or on your way to prom, or when you got some big news, or when you had the best college house party you'll never forget. Share a few with me in the comments below. I'm Ben, the Playlist Fiend, and thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.